Hey guys, I've got an interesting treat here for you today. It's a Maxon 2140.937 DC motor that was being discarded by my workplace in this disassembled condition. So, what I'd like to do is talk about it a bit, show you some cool things with it, reassemble it, and show you how it works. Let's start with the fun stuff. This here is an AC to DC adapter, and I have it set to 12 volts. In this mess of wires I have running from the adapter, there's a positive, red, and negative black alligator clip. See? Let's have some fun. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. I'd like to rest the motor on something, so I'm going to be using these pliers and with a rubber band attached to them to help them stay closed. I'll put the motor like so, that way it'll be stable and yet the armature will be free to move. Okay, so I'm going to take these alligator clips and just uh, directly touch them to the commutator. That's this part in the center. Pretty cool, right? Unfortunately, using alligator clips in place of motor brushes can actually cause damage to the commutator. So, a better idea is to get some thin copper reeds. Simply connect the copper reeds to the alligator clips like so. And connect them. So now we're going to get a little bit more serious. We're going to try to reassemble this motor. Okay, and I'll clear this space. This is the bottom of the motor. These are the brushes and the commutator would go in the center right there. They're pretty unique brushes because of their shape and because they're tensioned by springs right here and right there. So if I push this one back, that one goes this way this one goes this way. Now the goal is to hold them in this position long enough for you to get them onto the commutator and then they can press it from the sides. So after examining the system from all sides I noticed that there were these two tiny holes one there and one there and I said to myself, well these have to be deliberate and lo and behold they were. The idea here is I'm going to pull these brushes back and lock them into place from the bottom by inserting a pin into here this hole and the other one and from this side it's gonna look like this. So see that one of the brushes is held in place by the pin from this side this hole right here I'm going to demonstrate I'll also be applying some tension inwards, but here that will be translated to outwards, which pushes the brush even farther out. So the opposite side as well, swing that out and get a pin into there.
and now to reassemble the motor I'm going to align the parts like so apply tension on the pins push this in and the pins feel loose now because um, the brushes are touching the commutator they can easily be taken out now and the motor has been reassembled now of course we want to see this thing run so here's our power supply and our favorite talking alligator clips hello hi so we're gonna connect it to this motor and we'll see if it works and lo and behold it works and it's pretty cool you could see the sparks in there Now I'd like to briefly highlight some interesting information about this motor. The manufacturer is Maxon Motor, founded on December 5, 1961, with a headquarters in Sahel, Switzerland. The company developed and patented its own ironless winding system. Its motors are available brushless or brushed with graphite brushes or precious metal brushes. Another curiosity is the pricing of these motors. On eBay you can see that they start from 30 to 50 bucks, going all the way to 100 bucks depending on the configuration. Here's another site that sells these motors. As you can see they float between 50 to 70 bucks. The site also provides the most pertinent specs in the descriptions. Lastly I'd like to show you the data sheet, which has a plethora of detailed information. The particular motor that I have is the one with the winding number 937. Its specs are in the column below. And scrolling down there's some more information that an engineer would be interested in. That's all for this video. As always, thanks for watching.